Welcome back guys. We are going to talk about TEC specifications and this is a great TEC for specifications uh, because it has some nice round numbers like 400 QMAX and I happen to have this one in my TEC calculator. So we're going to talk about the numbers that are, let me add a layer here so I can draw on it. We're going to talk about what all of these numbers mean and how they're obtained and how. so what? Who cares? How do we use them? Okay, IMAX is amps. Okay, that's how many amps? VMAX is volts. Now Vmax is sometimes called Umax. And in my calculator it's called Umax. I don't know why it was called Umax. Vmax kind of makes more sense. DT Max uh, and T Max. Now T Max is basically how hot it can get. Should never be any relevance to us because if your TC is getting 125 degrees, you've got a lot of problems. You'll have water boiling everywhere. Uh, DT max is the maximum temperature difference between the top and the, the bottom of the TEC. And we're now going to talk about the relationship between those numbers. Okay, so what they do is they get a TEC and they apply current to it, which also means voltage, and they keep applying more and more and more power until they reach this number here. Now that is the maximum temperature be between these two surfaces. If you continue to increase the voltage beyond this, the TC won't explode, it, it will continue to work, but the, the DT max will start to decrease. So it's a bit of a curve, like this. And this is DT max, or the maximum delta. Now at that point, when, when this is achieved, this and this achieve this, or are the result. Well, it depends which way you want to look at it. Uh, DT max is a result of applying amps and volts to it. Now, these here do not have, an, is not this number here. This number here is the amount of cooling or energy moved from the cold side, which should be the bottom moved to the top side. Okay, now this is where things start to get a bit complicated. Q max is not the maximum amount of heat moved while applying V max. It is the maximum amount of amps moved while applying I max. And that can be seen with my calculator. So here we have this TEC, 400 Q max, uh, 24 volts, 24.8, DT max is 61.2, and amps. Now if we apply 74% of the voltage, which is only 18 volts, it will pull the 26.8. 92 or 27 amps, I can't actually get it smack on uh, because of the accuracy of the program. And that moves the approximate 400 watts. If we were to apply 100% of Umax or volts and calculate that, we can actually move a lot more heat. We can move uh, 421 and if we were to apply that, we're actually pulling way more amps, 36.37 theoretical amps. 
Now this is one of the ways that people will manipulate you into buying things by their definition of of Qmax. If Qmax is the total amount of heat moved from the cold to the hot side, side sorry, while applying the voltage, that will end up being higher. If it is what it's supposed to be while applying IMAX, it will be a lower number. But you won't necessarily know that when buying that. Now the other thing to take into consideration is that all of these numbers, well, probably not the last one, these numbers, will change depending on how hot the temperature is of the hot side while testing. And this is another way that people manipulate P uh, TC results. So we're just talking about the hot side. As you increase the hot side temperature, then you will achieve greater numbers. All these numbers will go up. If you cool the hot side, then all of those numbers will co go down, and we'll have a look at that. So here we have the numbers at 26.85, so that's the hot side temperature. Now, 26.85, that's a random as number, that is actually 300 Kelvin, which, in my opinion, opinion is what they should be rated at, but they are commonly rated at 25, uh, 50, or you'll see 27. Now, you need to know this number to know if they're pulling your chain or not, because if we jack this up, it's going to really move those numbers big time. Now, on this, this particular sheet, it doesn't actually tell you what hot side temperature it's rated at, so you're left wondering. But we can make assumptions based on the rest of the, the sheet down here, which is this part here, and it actually tells you here 27 degrees, which is going to be 300 Kelvin. And they're talking about 28 amps. Okay. So let's have an example of that. So here is our TEC. We'll clear that. And these numbers are as close as I, I can get them. We need to remember that this TC calculator is a is based on mathematical equations, whereas this document theoretically, and I mean big theoretically, I've got in my fingers in inverted commas that you can't see because you can't see me. It's theoretically tested, so it's impossible for make make it for <laughs> for me to make a general calculator, which is possible to get everything as per tested, but it's, uh, it should be close enough. So anyway, let's jack up the hot side temperature and see what happens. Let's make it uh, 50 degrees. And that's made a huge difference, hasn't it? So we've jacked up Qmax was 400, now it's 461. Max volts has gone up. Our DT Max has increased and IMAX has increased. Now, if you want your TECs to look good, rate them at uh, 50 degrees. Now, likewise, if we were to rate them at, say, 15 degrees, we will have the inverse. Where we have, uh, have a reduction in Qmax, uh, Umax, DTMax, and IMAX. So that's another important thing to know when you're buying a TEC, what rated temperature it has. The other thing that people do is that they, and particularly eBay people, is that they make up their own specification, which they call, which the internet has nicely called Pmax. And Pmax, as far as I can tell, is a made-up number to inflate it. Uh, let me fire up the old calculator here. Pmax is the amps, 28, multiplied by the voltage, 24.8. 
and that would be considered a 649.4 watt TDC and this is what most, not most, because I guess I can't say I've looked through most of them, uh, certainly a large number of people on eBay will be rating their TDCs on Pmax. Now TDCs are supposed to be about moving heat not how much power they generate not generate how much power they they use so you need to check that too now while we're talking about that all the power that is used will be rejected from the hot side if we have our TEC and we um, give it a hundred percent of voltage. I've written the, the um, TC calculator based on voltage because I presume that most people will apply a static voltage and PWM it on and off as opposed to adjusting the amps but you could say that is PWM but this is the way it is. Can't have everything. So if we apply a 200 watt load our CPU you'll find that this bad boy is going to use 792 watts of electricity while moving the 200 watts so your total heat load is just under a kilowatt and that is what you're going to have to be cooling with your, uh, with your radiators which is a, a huge amount and this is efficiency not particularly efficient but I'm going to do an entire video based on efficiency and what that actually is because there's a, a lot of stuff out on the internet which is not based on facts. Well, while we are playing with the calculator we can actually add more TCs if you had two which would be a huge electricity bill. Now one thing we must talk about is the relationship between this and this. Now unfortunately you don't get a delta of 62 degrees while moving 400 watts. No, no, no. How it's rated is you're pl applying 28 amps and at that time you're applying 28 amps and that gives you 62 degrees of delta but while you're achieving the 62 degrees of delta you are moving a big fat zero watts zero not 400 zero as you start applying a, a wattage to this this number 62 will start reducing till the point where it gets to zero, almost zero, depending on how you've rated Qmax. So that is a very important thing to consider. And we can see that on here. Uh, let's get rid of that. Okay. We'll put this back, now it is back to 26.85. We have a delta of 62 degrees while applying 100% power voltage moving nothing and we get a 62 degrees delta as soon as we start applying a, a, a load to that of 100 notice it's just decreased we double that 200 bang it's re reduced reduce it some more uh, 300 and we can reduce it some more, you see it's constantly dropping to 400 ah, see we've got two TCs, that's why it's going so slowly until we have a uh, very little delta okay, temperature be between the hot side and the cold side let's get rid of that which it will complain about, that's fine and at this point we have no delta and we're back to moving an awful lot of amps using an awful lot of electricity to effectively achieve nothing 
Now, the other thing to consider is that if you reduce the power by reducing that or that, these will also reduce. So if we apply 50% of the power, well actually that's 100% of the power, we're getting a 62 degree delta and we're able to move our 400 watts. If we halve that, we will have reduced our delta and reduced our maximum amount of heat we can move and so on. Now you will have noticed that, well you may or may not have noticed, but that's actually not a straight line. But if you decrease the power going to it, you reduce the amount of energy you can move, or the amount of heat load you can move, and the maximum delta you can move it to, or if you like, the maximum cooling. Now one of the reasons why people will run a TDC well under 100% of its power is for efficiency. Uh, if we moved, uh, let's call it 100 watts. Efficiency is pretty poor. If we were to move, drop this down to say 50, will that work? Yep, now our efficiency is now five times higher. That is a good thing. And we can keep, keep dropping it. And now our efficiency is, interestingly enough, more than 1. So this is more than 100% efficient. Now I'm sure you might be all going, Warning, warning, Will Robinson. Which I think is from an old, old sci-fi movie, TV series. Um, which probably no one knows what I'm talking about. And I'm going to do a whole series on TEC efficiency, as I've already said, there's uh, a general belief which is not based on any tangible facts about how inefficient TECs are. So hopefully this has been helpful and we've all learnt some things together and we can now apply it and get better expectations from the blocks we're going to build because we better understand the relationship between the different values that the TCE has and how temperature affects those values and how changing the voltages affects those values as well. So hopefully you've enjoyed it. Give me a like on the YouTube page and um, please subscribe if you haven't. Drop me some ideas so we can talk about it. Thank you very much, guys. I shall see you in the next one. Bye-bye.